Hey guys, it's Related Christ here, and uh, today, I know that was a weird, it wasn't as hyped up, but, um, because this is a bit more of a serious talk. Um, lately, I, you know, I, I get stuck in sin, uh, pretty quickly sometimes, and sometimes I, I can go pretty deep, um, into what I do, and and uh, sometimes I feel lost. And then when all this dopamine, um, which if you don't know what dopamine is, it's basically, I mean, I don't really even know what it is. It works in the reward system, and it's basically like passion. You drive towards it, and when I get all this dopamine, dopamine for Jesus, you know, I, you know, I want to make these videos, and I want to talk about definitely a very important thing today. This important thing today is um, quite serious. Uh, past summer, some of you might know from like one video that I made, it says I'm going to Russia. And so I went to Russia, but I didn't go to Russia with a heart or a mind that was thirsting for God. I didn't go to it with that. When we were headed to the airport, when we were walking out of the church, the first thing I said was, oh, I forgot my sunglasses. And now that I look back on that, it's like, who cares about your sunglasses? You're going to Russia. And so that was a big um, point, and I kind of thought over that, you know, even on the plane, or I don't think on the plane, but after I was like, why did I say that? And then... I began to look back on Russia, and it's like nine or nine or less months now. I think it's about nine or ten months that it's been since the last time I went to Russia, and and that's actually a big deal for me because I've come quite a far way from that. Um, I've I've very much humbled myself through a lot of things. Um, I don't seem as as holier than thou or anything, um, or as much so, um, but the biggest part of going to Russia was that I wasn't pursuing helping the teens. In a way, I was, but it was an arrogant way, which is not how you witness or help somebody come to Christ. The way that I did it was not at all useful in any way. The way I did it was I thought that I would, I would be the one to change them, to convert them, to get them to be baptized. And I got sad at the end because not a person from our group got baptized. And I was sad because I was like, oh, why didn't I do that? Why, why didn't I go after that? And I was so arrogant. I thought that I was the one to change them. And I started to blend in with them. And I, you know, I had some pretty bad sin traps at camp, a lot of stuff going on in my mind that wasn't necessarily at all from God at all. And I was very ashamed of it. But after Russia, even now, I went through a couple of the profiles of the teenagers there to just see how they're doing. I went through some photos, but what really made me sad was um, not that I don't get to see them, but I would love to see them, definitely. I mean, I, I would want to go down to Russia right now just to talk to the teens. You know, that would be awesome in summer. But what's so hard is that I see that they're so so lost and I hate I hate saying that word I hate saying lost I mean have you ever been on a trail before and you just get lost you don't know what your way back in a giant forest and you get lost that is scary okay I mean it just screams the word danger and this is how they are they don't see their 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 burden of being lost at all. And I feel like they're they I feel and I know that they are blind to what they're doing. And I remember one of my friends from Russia 
she just seemed so, you know, sweet. She was a very sweet person, you know, very... She could speak English. She was very nice. But she posted on her, um, Insta... Yeah, Instagram story, um, a bunch of pictures of, you know, her parts and stuff. And, you know, all I had to do was click, you know, to get past. And I felt so discouraged because a couple years back in 2016 they made a law the Russian government made a law to basically ban all evangelism in Russia Russia is the biggest country in the world and I think it's one of the countries with like the second biggest population and I think I don't know what it is it's like 400 or 8 million, 800 million people, or something along those lines. I know that it's a lot smaller than China. And a lot of them, I think about 30 to 70 percent of them, um, they say, oh yes, I am with the Russian Orthodox Church. And then even more are like, no, I'm atheist, you know, I don't believe in it's probably 1% or less than 1% who are true believers. I mean, doesn't that just break your heart? And the teens that I saw over in Russia, they seemed so sweet, and I was starting to blend in with them. I started to, um, you know, get more addicted to the world and stuff in a church camp, which is so wrong. And I was like, Reed, what are you doing? And after the trip... I felt so discouraged. I know that I'm not the one to save them, okay? I can talk to them, I can share verses with them, I can send Christian music to them, whatever it is, you know, God work through me, you know, that that's all it is. And it breaks my heart so much to see that there's like 800 million people in Russia. Most of them are lost. And they put a ban on evangelism. And even some of the people in the church, I heard uh, cussing. Um, and, and I love every one of them. I, d I do see sin, but through the person, I don't see sin. I love them. Okay? I love people who struggle with lustfulness, sexual immorality. I love all homosexuals. I love everyone who sins. Whether it's a small sin, whether it's a white lie or a black lie, whatever it is, I love them. So don't get me wrong when I start talking about sin. But it hurts my heart so much that even the people in the church were doing sinful acts, like, not necessarily with each other, but in front of their own Christians. And in this age where we're just using we, we deal with everything as it is flesh. We deal with the problems in our lives as it is flesh. We deal with everything as it is flesh. We don't deal with anything spiritual anymore. And that hurts my heart so much. It says we have the mind of Christ in Philippians. That means prayerful dependence. That means a compassionate heart. That means that we only have our mind on what is the point of life. It says in Galatians 5, the only thing that counts, the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Love covers millions of things. And by millions, I mean millions. It covers, it covers a, a bunch of sin. Okay, it just covers sin. It covers your love for God, your praise for God, your everything for God. And in your faith that... That is so important. Your faith is witnessing to others, loving others, sharpening the iron with each other. That is faith expressing itself through love. I can't express how important this is. And we have lost sight completely from what matters. Witnessing, loving, being faithful. Yes, pay your bills, pay your, pay your mortgage, that, that is very important, okay? If you don't do that, and you're just like, no, I gotta, you know, I gotta love Jesus more than this, well, 
you know, you, you are loving Jesus more than it, but that's also like hate for your family if you're not paying that stuff. So that is important. We still do have to live on a human level. But what I'm talking about is that we could care less to send a verse to someone, to pray for someone that could potentially save their life for eternity. That's what hurts me. Is that we don't care about our iron anymore. We don't care about sharpening each other. And I'm reading 2 Samuel right now, and it is so awesome. It's like, you know, it's like an action novel almost. It pretty much is an action novel, but it's truth. It's full truth. It's everything. And in one of the verses, I think it was, um, oh, I, I forgot what it was, but it was really important because I loved what it said. It was talking about how David was, um, he was fighting a battle with the Philistines, and it said he was just exhausted. And one Philistine who just hated him, and I see all Philistines as giants, so I'm saying that this guy was probably a giant, okay? So this guy hated David, and he was like, I'm going to kill David in this war. In this battle, I'm going to kill David. So he was coming, like, to David until one of the members of David's posse, that should be a shirt, or that's a logo, David's posse, King David's posse, Abishai, brother of Joab, son of Zeruiah, he came in and killed the Philistine, and save David from him. This is, and what he said next was probably the most incredible thing you could ever say. Next to I am and stuff. But this is an awesome quote. He said, Never, ever go out to battle without us ever again. That That is just so awesome. He cared for... They cared for each other. Those were brothers there. And we could care less if we send a verse to someone to save their lives. I mean, get with it. Because we can keep living our lives like this. We can keep living like this. Sinful going day throughout day. Living, what, till, you know, 75 or 100 or 120, whatever you live to, without talking to a single person about Jesus Christ. Without ever listening to God. Listen to Him. Surrender to Him. For life, essentially, eternally, is found in Him. And even... When I'm in my sin, even when anyone's in their sin, God is, God is so graceful, and I'm so incredibly thankful for that. I'm so thankful for his, just his mercy and his grace. And even when we get to the point where we have sinned so much to where we are on the verge of death, on the verge of God killing us, and you can see this in Exodus 19 or 33, he still says, you know what, I love you, so I'm going to distance so I don't, you know, kill you. That's, that's what he said. He has so much grace on us. So when you sin, guys, repent and listen to God and surrender to him and love him. For this is the life. Th this is the way. So follow, follow him and think of where you're going right now. If God is telling you to, okay, I need you to write this book. Because you know what? If you write this book, and if you get famous, then you're going to be the witnesser to celebrities, and you're going to save all of them, and they're going to post on their social medias about Jesus, and those are going to save the people who watch them, and it's going to save millions of people. And if you're rejecting to not do that, if you're so caught up in yourself and, oh, what if he wants me to do this? Oh, I should go to a friend first. Don't do that. Just do it. Or if he's telling you to go to your friend and talk to him, if he's telling you to be faithful in your own neighborhood, do it. Because if you keep living this life, 
just going your own way, just looking at yourself in the mirror, just taking that mirror and pulling it closer and closer to your face. If all the nourishment you have is one Sunday a week, then you might as well quit the whole thing. Live for God, listen to Him. When a thought that you know comes from God, do it. Witness to your friends. If they're in another country, if they're right across the street, talk to them. Because that is a life. They are a soul. There is an eternity. Thank you guys so much for watching this. It was so weird because I just felt like this video was like I needed to do this. I've never been so quick to make a video before. I've, I've never been this quick to make it. And I think this is probably the most truthful video I have ever done. And I know I'm in a different place right now. I'm in a different part of my room. But I thank you guys so much. I know that I only have, what, 59 subscribers on this channel. And if there's 59, if, if that's the people that I'm talking to, then so be it. You know, I would rather live my life helping 59 people than helping none and following my own way. So, thank you guys so much. And I know this is probably already a long video, but thank you so much for watching. God bless. Um, I want to send you off with a verse. It's, it's on my wall over there. Uh, 2 Samuel 15, 21. This has been like the verse of my life right now. It says, As surely as the Lord lives, and as the Lord the ki my king lives, wherever the Lord my king may be, whether it means life or death, there your servant will be. I know it's it tied to get tight talking about King David, but I cannot express just how awesome that is to be ready to do anything for God. To be ready to do anything, to live, to, to just live for him is awesome. Be there for God, whether it means life or death. Thank you guys so much for just watching these. So.